Um, well, hi. I'm going to try to talk pretty briefly because I, I, I only have a certain thing that I want to say that um, really bugs me. And you're always supposed to be personal, right, on the stage me? at your conference. Not you, not you. You bug me. I mean, you, I bug you. You do, but that's not what I'm going to talk about. Um, so I, my, what's my job? I, I write in the Wall Street Journal. I do some television. I run a conference. But my job is basically looking at technology products from the point of view of consumers, not from the point of view of doctors, not from the point of view of corporations, point of view of consumers. And I also am diabetic, and I have heart disease. In fact, I had a heart attack and a quad bypass uh, 13 years ago. And the first emergence from my recuperation that I did, and it was a long recuperation, was to come to Ted to one of his conferences. And he put a big beating heart up on the screen when I walked out, which was very nice of him. Uh, I can't remember what I talked about, but whatever it was. Uh, so I have these, I spend most of my time doing three things, right? Uh, evaluating technologies from the point of view of consumers and trying to manage my two diseases so I don't die tomorrow. And that's what I do. And we've heard some fantastic presentations here about the fusion of technology and health. Uh, you know, some of the some of the products and uh, uh, gadgets, that's, that's hardly the right word, equipment and fantastic breakthrough stuff you've seen for clinicians has been amazing. But remember, I look at this stuff from the point of view of the consumer, not the enterprise, not the clinician, not the hospital. And I'm here to tell you that as we get diseases that are meant to be managed as opposed to killing, just killing millions of people, that you can, they can't quite cure them, but you can manage them. This is what, as you all know, we're trying to do with cancer. It's what, there's an enormous push to manage diabetes. We've heard about the epidemic in diabetes. We just need to somehow take the kind of technology we see in this, which is an amazing thing, and somehow get it into the hands of consumers so that they can maintain their wellness before they get to the disease and hopefully never get the disease and also so they can uh, manage a disease if they have it. So here are some of the gadgets that are important in, in my life. And I believe me, I, I use hundreds of, of gadgets and, and evaluate them. And there are weeks when I walk around with different phones. I will probably be walking around next week with a different tablet for a while. But I own this. I use this. I wrote a column actually recently about uh, not even taking a laptop on a 10-day trip to Europe and instead taking this. And this is very valuable to me. It's with me a lot. So is this. And I know a lot of people in the audience have these two things or something similar. Uh, and uh, really, a lot of my life is in these things, and I depend a lot upon them. But they're not the most important gadget that I deal with all day. The most important gadget I deal with all day is this piece of crap. This is an AccuCheck Aviva glucose meter. And it is a piece of crap. I'm sorry. <laughs> and by the way, I apologize. I don't mean to personally insult any drug company people here, but you all make pieces of crap in this field. Um, if you have diabetes, you have to monitor your glucose. That's what your doctor says. It makes sense. It's logical. This thing is about 1977 technology. If you showed this to Steve Jobs as a product, you'd be fired immediately. Um, it doesn't connect with this. It doesn't connect with this. It doesn't connect with, more importantly, it doesn't connect with the internet. Wi-Fi might as, never, as well never have been invented for this product or any of the ones that you go into CVS or Walgreens and see very prominently displayed for very little money. And there's another problem with this. There's two other problems. One we all know about is 
that it's invasive. It requires you to prick your finger to get a drop of blood. I happen to be one of those people, it doesn't bother me particularly. Uh, and I've been fairly successful in controlling my diabetes, I think partly because it doesn't bother me. But we all know there are millions of people who are really bothered by that and who you either are deterred or use it as an excuse not, not, to, uh, not to check their glucose. There's a third problem. This is an enormous profit and revenue engine for the drug companies because it's a razor and blade model. These are often given away free or, you know, they cost virtually nothing. The test strips that you have to put in, and you guys all know what I'm talking about? You have to put a little test strip in. They cost a dollar a piece. So every time you go to check your glucose, you have to pay a dollar. Now maybe you pay a little less if you have a, depending on your health insurance. A lot of people have bad health insurance plans. But, but even if you have a decent plan, you're still paying, I don't know, 50 cents, 70, you know, 30 cents, 70 cents, something per check. And yet, we as a society know that, we, that it costs us a fortune if we don't control diabetes. You know, because there are amputations and there's blindness and there's uh, caregiving and all this kind of stuff that has to happen. And if we would just make it easy for people to check their sugar, and for doctors to see the results, it would be uh, a huge step forward. Now I know my, my, my friend Dean Kamen, who I've known for years, really through Richard, stopped me earlier and was talking to me about how the FDA is a big part of the problem here. Steve Jobs did not have to get a government agency to approve the iPad before he sold it, with the exception of, uh, you, a lot of you probably know, you have to go through a routine, any computer or electronic device has to go through a routine check at the FCC to just see if it's leaking uh, RF. But really, he didn't have to ask a government agency, can I make, I have this idea, can I make this thing and sell it? But these guys do. And so, yeah, the FDA is part of the problem, and Dean told me a whole story, which is an interesting story about how backward they are. But I also maintain the drug companies are way behind. Um, Bayer brought out a glucose meter that I did a review of. And I did a review of it because they took a USB flash drive and they built a glucose meter into it. And I give them credit for that. Although I would say it's like something you would have thought of or should have thought of six, seven years before they did it. But they did it. And when you plug it into a PC or a Mac, it had some tracking software on it, and you could see your results, and it had a screen, it had a few other features, and I thought, and I wrote a review about it. Well, dealing, if you think it's interesting dealing with Apple, and believe me, it's e interesting dealing with Apple as a journalist, I mean, the conference call to, to, to uh, for me to ask questions about this meter was attended by this, like, army of people, lawyers, and, you know, six PR, I mean, I'm exaggerating, but it was ridiculous. Um, I think we need to somehow get the technology that is in here, that is in all of your pockets and purses and all of your, all of your laps, and get them into devices. I'm using diabetes, but it could apply to some kind of device that deals with, with knowing my blood pressure, knowing how, you know, I'm not supposed to have a lot of salt. I don't know about a lot of you. Some of you may be on that kind of a diet. I have, I have no way of measuring how much salt I have. I stay, I've been reasonably successful, the doctors tell me, and that's good. But I don't have any real-time information about that, and my house is full of this stuff. And it doesn't tell me any of it. Now, there's a huge category of medical apps on here. One of them is called Medica, but don't download it all at once. <laughs> I did download Medica. It took me an hour last night on the hotel Wi-Fi. No, it really, it took me an hour. It's gorgeous, I love having it, but it took me an hour. Uh, it's 200 megabytes, I think, or something like that. Um, but there's, there's, those of you who have iPads or iPhones or Android phones, I, I can't, I didn't look at the Android market today, so I don't know, but I looked at the, the uh, Apple app, mark, app Store, which you know is the biggest one, and there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of apps that are in the medical category. They're almost all for clinicians. I have nothing against that. I think it's wonderful. We saw some of it today. 
And I think it's wonderful. I'm, I, I want there to be more of these things for clinicians, but they're for clinicians. You know, even that fabulous portable uh, 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 echocardiogram thing we saw earlier, which I loved seeing that demo, isn't, as, at least if I understood the demo correctly, not meant to be passed out to heart patients. It's meant for the doctor to use. And so I'm all for that. But then you go to the other category. They have a different category on here. I can't, I haven't asked Apple why they divide it this way, called health and fitness, which really is things for consumers. Again, there's some valuable things in there. There's a lot of exercise programs. There's some very good meditation programs. I have some of them because I believe that that's helpful in my care regimen, and I commend it to you. But, um, but there are, you know, there, there are, there's a baby naming app in there. There's, a, there's an app on professional development. Um, there's a golf tips app in the health and fitness area. Now, I suppose playing golf is a fitness activity, but there's very little that I can find that speaks to the real serious uh, 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 health problems or helps you actually take care of yourself other than, other than by animating something you could buy in a book anyway. We need to do much, much better. And so, um, I am waiting for non-invasive glucose testing, or at least intelligent glucose testing, and for something that is in 1979 technology. Thanks for listening.